Hi, welcome to HHA Business Pro with Mofaro and Joyce. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the challenges that come with starting a home care business, which is life getting in the way. So there are four main reasons why a lot of people struggle in the early stages of starting their home care business. And it has a lot to do with life events. Let me start with the very first cause of delays when starting a home care business, which is people spreading themselves too thin. It happens to me. It happens to you, I'm sure. It happens to everybody. Anybody, yes. So I have good news and bad news. Well, the bad news is that we all have the same 24 hours and nobody cares about your problems. Starting a business is very difficult. And by you spreading yourself too thin, you're doing yourself a disservice. And it's not ideal. So spreading yourself too thin could be you're attending to too many ideas at the same time. I've come across a lot of people that will say, hey, I'm starting a trucking business. I want to start a home care business. I want to do drop shipping. And those are too There's many too things. Many things going on. It's different if it was like three different ideas, but you can still blend them all together. Exactly. Yes. So for example, let's say if you're doing a trucking business, you're delivering goods, but also you're renting out your trucks to other people, or you're also selling trucks. It's the same niche and it, you won't be spread too thin. That's right. So it's easy to manage. And not only just business related to spreading yourself too thin, it also goes down to maybe you're prioritizing your partying, you're prioritizing traveling, taking vacations, mm -hmm. spending time with friends that will <laughs> hold you back in life. <laughs> These things happen. They do. And if you have too many friends, especially, it becomes very difficult to start a business. Yeah, having too many friends sometimes, that means it's destruction for you because you're trying to please your friends, but at the same time you're trying to do business. It's, it's just going to be difficult because if you're that type of person who has a lot of friends, you're always going to have people who are calling you for either seeking for advice over something or they're asking you to go out. And if you're a people pleaser, it's hard to say no. So... Yeah, the people who can't say no to a Sunday brunch. <laughs> right? When the girlfriends call them up for Sunday brunch, they can't say no. You're guilted into going to Sunday brunch. What you don't realize is that that same Sunday, you could have been spending an hour or two on your business. Yes, you could still go and have a good time. If you're prioritizing your business, before you're going to the Sunday brunch, spend an hour or two, do something that has to do with your business. What she's trying to say is don't be like us. I have friends. We don't have friends like that. No, we do, <laughs> but very few. <laughs> okay, yeah, very few friends. Yeah. It's because we prioritize, which leads to point number two, why a lot of people struggle in starting, which is they no longer find starting a business to be a top priority in their life anymore. Oftentimes, people get motivated by watching videos, they will watch like a motivational video or they see a friend of them doing something in the same field. And they're like, oh, now I'm motivated to start my own thing. They're not really doing it for themselves. They're doing it for because others. Because somebody else is doing it. Like you just said, people do business because they see somebody else doing somebody it. Somebody else is doing it. But with business, you also have to be passionate on yeah. what you're doing. You have to really love it because yes. it's so difficult that if you don't love it, then you can easily give up. It's just like also choosing a career. There are people that I know of who ended up uh, doing a certain job because so-and-so is doing, oh, so-and-so is a nurse. I need to be a nurse too. But they're not really happy with the job. And they hate it with they a passion. It. Yes. You never want to be in that situation. No, you don't. Just be you, do you, you know? Yeah. So you really need to evaluate what your priorities are. So if starting a business and becoming financially independent is a priority to you, then you should treat it as a priority and cut out everything. Cut out drinking, cut out partying, cut out smoking, all these distractions and yes. prioritize that one thing. The bad news is that no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> about your problem especially if as a man nobody cares nobody cares whether you're a man or a woman nobody cares okay. it's you that has to care, care. yes exactly because your friends want to see you suffer they want to see you fail <laughs> they want to see things falling apart for you so waiting they can for talk your about, downfall yeah they're waiting for your downfall so they can talk behind your back about how far you've fallen it's the real. truth sounds really funny but it's real it's true 
Point number three, self-sabotage, which is also related to lack of prioritizing. There are a lot of people that have accomplished a lot of things. I talked to people that have said, you know, I'm a registered nurse, I'm an LPN, or I've started this business, or I'm an immigrant and I moved to this country. I could barely speak the language, but over, let's say, five, six years, I was able to learn the language. Are you kidding me? You are somebody, but that's you? You've accomplished all of that? Just realize you're not average. Why would you sabotage yourself and not think that you can start a business and make a success of yourself? Yeah, I remember my professor in college from Senegal. He didn't know any word of English. He came to do his university studies in New York and he learned his English while taking courses at the college. And when you hear him speak, you think this guy has been speaking English all his life. And he ended up being successful. Because he believed in himself. He believed himself. He did his undergraduate. He performed so well. He did his master's. He did so mm. well. And he ended up working for J.P. Morgan. Wow. Yes. Wow. But unfortunately, to cut the story short, he passed away. Heart attack. Wow. Yeah. You see, like a lot of people sabotage themselves because they forget how great they are. Right. And I think that's what it is. Even sometimes for me, I get into these episodes. It's not as much anymore as it used to be in the past where I would forget how good I am at certain things. Certain I'll places. forget how far I've come. Because when you're close to the top, rather, when you're climbing a mountain, climbing a mountain just means that you're trying to accomplish your dreams. Right. So you're climbing a mountain. It's hard to see how far you are unless you look back. You look back. And then when you look back, you're like, wow, I'm really high. You know, most people don't do that. No. They don't look back and see how far they've come, especially immigrants. Every time that I go back to Africa, I'm reminded how far I've come because I'm confronted with poverty. I'm confronted with people that could give up a limb to be in my shoes. They tell me that all the time, that, wow, you're so blessed. You've accomplished all this. But I'm looking at myself like, oh, really? 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 You don't see but it. But I don't but see I, it. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah. But other people see it. And that is the illusion of I believe the society that we live in because we're so isolated from reality. reality. You, when you go to work, everybody's fake. When you go to hang out at brunches, or parties, everybody there is fake. Mm -hmm. They just want to see you fall. But so they'll never tell you, oh, where are you from again? You're from Nigeria. Oh, okay, cool. And you, you've been here how long? How did you make it here? How did you learn your English? You know what I'm saying? All these things. Maybe Senegal because Nigeria is Senegal, English. yeah. Maybe Senegal or Cote d'Ivoire, oh, Ivory yes. Coast. When people are asking you those things, they're wowed by how far you've come. You've come. But you don't see it. It's crazy. Human nature is that uh, people tend not to tell others how great they are. Yes. People keep it to themselves. Not until when things are falling apart. That's when people remind you, man, you used to be so good at this, this, and yeah, that. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, it's, it's usually like coming from somebody who really, truly loves you, like a parent or a sibling. I don't know if you have ever been at a funeral. You'll hear so many good things about the person who died, and you wondered, why didn't they tell this person when they were still alive? That's what I'm trying to say. It's the same thing. When things are going bad for you, that's when you'll hear people saying, you used to do so well. Do you get what I'm saying? I but do, when I do. you used to be good or you used to do so well with whatever you're doing. They, they never not... complimented you. Exactly. That's not even once. So they only compliment you at your funeral. That's yes. sad. Not even a funeral or maybe yeah. when things are bad. Things are bad. When yes. you're homeless or something yes. like that. Yes. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. Well, that leads to point number four, why a lot of people struggle in the early stages of starting a home care business. And of course, I'll tell you about the solutions, the three solutions. So the fourth point is uncontrollable events, events that are outside of your control, like being sick, like being sick, sick. death of a loved one close yes. to you, or even like more positive things, right? Mm -hmm. That don't necessarily have to do with sickness or death, where maybe you've always wanted to start this business and you got pregnant. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes. It's a beautiful thing. It is. A it's a wonderful thing. thing. Yes. You got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Now you got to slow down a little bit. You yes. can't be in the hustle mode anymore. No. No. And then even when you have that kid, there's a whole nine months a year where okay. you're nurturing that kid. Right. That's going to cause a delay. Mm -hmm. That's a situation outside of your control. What I would say to somebody in that awesome situation is that keep your eye on the prize. 
What's the little that you can do as you are waiting to get back on your feet again? You can do so much. Do you remember when I was pregnant? We were still shooting videos. Yeah, right? that's right. That's right. <laughs> you were pregnant and we're still doing this. Yeah, we're doing YouTube videos. People didn't know that. They had no idea that you were pregnant uh, in the early days of this channel. So yeah, but you got to spin it in a positive way. Find a way to utilize the 24 hours that you have. Because remember, you have the same 24 hours that I have. Time waits for no one. Yes. You know, when you're young and strong, you have to utilize every moment, every every minute, minute. every minute. Another uncontrollable event could be maybe you're losing a job. But you know what? Running out of money and losing a job, it shouldn't freak people out like that because time is actually more important than money. Losing money and losing a job is just a temporary event. Life is very long, by the way. Yeah. Life is only short if you waste it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not wasting time, it's actually quite long. Let's say you live up to 70, 75, and you're only like 30. You still got 45 years to, you know, to make something of your life and to set yourself up to win. That's a lot of years. It's a lot of years. You know? Yeah. So don't give up just because you lost money, just because you lost a job. In 12 months, six months, you might get a new job. A lot of people, they try to focus on what they don't have. Oh, so they the spend problem. so much time focusing on what they don't have instead of focusing on how they can improve themselves. Yeah. Okay, I lost my job. What next should be done? But somebody's going to spend so much time thinking about that job that they lost. That used to be me in the first recession of 2008, 2009. That was me. I remember very vividly when I lost my job early 2009. I signed up for unemployment and I would just sit there for nine months. I'll be drinking and sleeping all day. That's what I did. And it was very unproductive, very destructive lifestyle. And to this day, I regret it because I could have read a lot. You're laughing. It's reality, but nobody cared about me. Man, but you were young. Yes, so I know. That's the main reason why you didn't care much about improving yourself. <laughs> because <laughs> I realized in 2009 it hit me like a ton of bricks that nobody cared nobody was coming to save me I had to drink my pain away if you lose your job I don't recommend that you know yes suck it up read something improve yourself and keep going because nobody cares about your problems let's talk about solutions three solutions solution number one is you need to put yourself in a situation where you're back is up against the wall. Let me tell you a quick story. Back in the day, I think early Greek times, there was this kingdom somewhere in Greece where this king always won battles. And so somebody asked him, how do you always win wars and battles? They were curious to know. They were curious to know. And then he told a person about a story about where he went to conquer this island because Greece is a bunch of islands, right? Okay. So he went to conquer this island. And the way he conquered it was he took his army, he put his army into a ship, took the ship to the island, parked the boat right there in the docks. So the other army knew that this guy was coming with his army to raid them, okay. to raid the island. So what the king did is he ordered his men to get off the boat, stand on the shore of the, on the beach, and then he ordered some of his men to burn down the boat as his army watched. What this was signaling is that we're not getting off this island unless we win. It's either death or victory. The point I'm trying to say is that a lot of people are too comfortable. They don't want to put their back up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall, you will do whatever it takes to win. So this guy ended up motivating his soldiers to win the war because these soldiers had no way of going back home. The only way they could go back home was through victory by defeating the people on that island. So sure enough, the people on that island were too comfortable because they were like, oh, we're home, so we, we can oh, beat okay, these guys. Yes. What they didn't know is they were fighting savages that didn't have a way to go back home. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So a lot of people are too comfortable in their day jobs, in their nine to fives, to the point where they don't feel the need to do anything beyond that. Or to come up with other plans of making money, like Correct. plan B, C. Yeah, plan B. Or even plan A, the yes. dream of, of achieving their dream. Because there's a saying that says, a paycheck is just a drug that your employer gives you so you can forget your dreams. That is so true. It is. It's a drug. It's very addictive. The <laughs> nine to five check, every two weeks, you know, you look at your direct deposit. Oh, you see it. You get excited. You, good, yes. yeah. you need to put yourself on death ground. That's what it's called, death ground, where your bag is up against the wall. Whether you do it artificially, 
you could do it in a way that maybe not getting rid of your nine to five, maybe instead of you focusing on the money that you get from your nine to five, try and see if you can live off of the money from your hustle for 30 days without touching your money from your job. job. See if you can do that. Not so many people can. Not so many people can do that because they know they got a paycheck. Sometimes also some of these jobs that people have, they're jobs that require so many hours. Yeah. So you find by the time somebody's done, they're very exhausted. All they come home is just maybe have their dinner and then go to bed. Excuses, excuses, but I get it. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Guess what? No one cares. But which leads to point number two, solution number two, which is you need to apply the 80 20 rule to everything. Yeah. The 80 20 rule is Pareto principle, I believe it is, where 20% of people own 80% of the wealth. Right. 20% of the men are dating 80% of the women. 20% of people in a company do 80% of the work that is productive. It's a pattern it is. in life where 20% of this. Contributes eighty percent uh, of the results. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that, to your point, a lot of people are tired and whatnot after their twelve-hour shift. I get it, but there's a way to apply eighty-twenty rule because a lot of people focus on things that don't matter. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. So let me give you an example of a job, like a nursing job. You know, the RNs. Most RNs work for like a lot of hours. They do. Again, I'm not saying this is an excuse, but I understand that the reason why a lot of people cannot come up with another plan is because of the hours that uh, they spend at their workplaces. And if they have a day off maybe over the weekend... My point exactly. My point exactly. Do some, okay, if they are off on the business. weekends or whatever day, it doesn't have to have the weekends because, you know, with nurses, they have shifts, right? Yeah. At times they work on the weekends and some weekdays and then they have some days off on the weekdays or weekends. So whatever days they are off is they can make use of doing something Exactly. Else. There's something you used to always tell me is that if you have time to go to the bathroom, 15 <laughs> minutes, you have time to pray, isn't it? Yes. You told me that. There are people that do 12-hour shifts too but they've prioritized starting a business. Putting one hour, even 30 minutes a day, goes a long way, I promise uh, it you. It adds up. It adds up. At the end of the month, you'll be like, damn. Yeah. Wow. I mean, look at even like how productive we are with this channel. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one video a day. You're going to look you back. You get time. Yeah, that. you look back in a year, you're like, wow, I can't believe how many videos we've done. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people spend too much time doing things that don't matter. For example, you find somebody who's focusing on uh, the name of their business. They spend three months talking about the name of the business. And they spend another three months talking about what phone service they should be using. Another one spends another three months talking about where should they open their office at. But what they're not focusing on is how to get clients. That's the number one thing. True. How to get clients is the most important. Because that's where the money is. That's where the money is. Yeah. Everything else doesn't matter. Everything else is the 80% of noise. Yes, you take care of that, but that's not what really brings in money. That's not what really brings in money. Mm -hmm. The 20% that gives you 80% of the results that you need is sales, looking for clients and selling them and telling them, hey, work with me. But the problem is people don't believe in themselves. They don't have the confidence. They don't have the so confidence. they distract themselves. I know what it is. They distract themselves with the 80% of noise because they don't have confidence so self-sabotage that's what it is True. and they don't even know that they are self-sabotaging themselves they don't even know it but when you talk to them at least when i talk to them i see it it's so clear like oh i see what's going on here this person is focusing on this thing of the color scheme of their website because they don't want to do sales do you get what i'm saying yes. sabotaging themselves that's solution number three is you need to change your environment physically because changing your environment physically does something to you it disconnects you from the habits that you're so used to because you have your set routine it's like let's say if you want to lose weight and uh, you have to sort of change your habits it I could be eating habits let me say if you're this person who can spend a night without eating ice cream you gotta cut that down you like to drink soda every day you have uh, to cut that down yeah maybe you need to try and start working out little by little, you know? Yeah, simple things. Like, for example, like every time I go to a grocery store, right, I avoid this ice cream aisle because I know if I see my favorite brand of ice cream, I'm just going to grab it. 
it's an automatic thing and i'll feel guilty your brain will trick it yes yeah. and i'll feel guilty after i eat it i'll hate myself so i just avoid the ice cream aisle just a simple exercise of changing my environment it's something so simple but changing your environment could be as radical as moving to a different city where nobody knows you you are too comfortable in their routine that holds them back because if you are in an environment where you're so used to and you've been there for let's let's say 10 years mm -hmm. you know your mom is down the street your cousin is down the street your friend is over there i mean there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong no, with nothing wrong with that to your family members mm -hmm. but there's times that you just need this space whereby you, you, you're not distracted by anybody yeah where so nobody you can knows focus you. on everything that you're doing mm -hmm. yeah changing your environment to do a lot even like something as simple as going on vacation yes you know and that's part of changing your environment yes. without necessarily moving going on a mini vacation could be to a neighboring city where you just spend a weekend there then you just get in tune with the culture of the city nightlife and whatnot and come back feeling fresh with a fresh perspective. Yeah, so I hope you got some value from this video. And if you're interested in growing your agency, if you already started your agency and you're looking to get private paying clients consistently and reliably, we recommend using Google Advertising. We've created a course. Link is in the description of the video and you can preview that course. We touch on what Google Advertising can do for your business. Because right now in your area, there are people that are searching for the services that you have to offer and your business should show up in the search results. We set it up for you and we teach you how to do sales training and we'll teach you how to do sales using our sales training program. It's a script that we come up with that can help you close deals as they're coming through um, Google advertising links in the description of the video. We'll see you in the next video. See ya.